Hello everyone, welcome to Fast Track on Health Global. I am Samik Sen, joining us today is Professor Talpankar from DM College, Goa. Thank you so much for taking out this time for us. Welcome to Health Global. Shadows in the Dark. Due to the status of migrant working community in Goa, please shed some light on the social issues you are vocal about. Yes. Uh, I am part of a group called Children's Rights in Goa, sure. where we deal with stu- children uh, who are vulnerable, who are street children and orphans. And okay. children who have basically issues, sexual abuse, etc. So okay. as part of that, we were funded by uh, Vikas Adhyayan Kendra called VAP. Okay. Okay. And uh, they wanted us to study about migrants, status of migrants in Goa, basically uh, working class. So yes. uh, I, my entire sample study throughout Goa was about 350. And yes. uh, we, uh, we gathered uh, information. And uh, I realized, in fact, when we did that study, some stunning results came out. Okay. One thing was uh, these people who are there and staying, they have great love for Goa. Sure. Secondly, uh, we always feel that, you know, uh, the upper middle class or rich class, they look down upon people, but these migrants, they do not realize. They say majority of the people who come get us for work, they're very good with us. About 80% of people said we are very happy. True. They also said that, uh, would you like to stay here in Goa? The children said, of course, because we have been born and brought up here, we are going to stay here. Another thing which was very surprising is they have adapted entire food style of Govans. We have okay. something called fish and curry and rice or dal and rice. So that is what it is. Uh, this is something which was very surprising. Another thing which was very surprising is we found that majority of the families have adopted a single child or two children families. Okay. They okay. go in for family planning. Very okay. few families we, where we found that there were three children, four children. But unfortunate thing which, which really you know shocked and I didn't sleep for some time and I got that you know, our children, their graph starts, you know, when they go to school, they, you know, when they are 20, 22, 25, their work culture starts. And then they are, you know, a graph goes up and they go up and they, you know, social status and they start earning and, you know, and 60s, 70s, and the graph goes like this. And these people, migrant basically, who are very, very poor, for them, these children start working when they are seven and eight, nine years old. And by the time they are 14, 15, 16, either they are addicted to things, they are overworking. So by the time they are, you know, 25, 26, 28, and a little bit above, they are almost, you know, uh, becoming old. We okay. never, we found very few people who are older than 65. So it's a Ooh. very, very sad thing. Very sad. You know, and which uh, we, and I proposed a lot of things. And uh, this was done in 2006. Okay. But the position is still the same. It's not changing. But very many cool. children are getting educated. They are going to school. Uh, there are facilities. So it's not, it's not a totally black or it's not totally white. There are gray patches, but uh, we need to pay more attention to uh, human human humanity, basically. Whether they are from a particular place or they are from somewhere else, it doesn't matter. We are, this entire earth is ours and we should be part of it. So, you did the Konkani translation of Shashi Deshpande's English book, The Long Silence, as yes. did Mon Tem, which won you the Saitya Academy Award in 2017. So does this kind of accolade help in your field of work? No, actually what happened, I teach, I'm a commerce teacher. Okay. See, when <laughs> I'm 80s, child of 80s, 
where uh, we only had art, science, and commerce. And the place where I'm grown up, I come from a lower mid, um, lower middle class. So there was no choice given for girls, one thing. It was a big favor that I was being sent to school and colleges. So when I chose, I wanted to go for arts, everybody said, no, no, arts is for sweepers. Do you want to become a sweeper? So you have to take commerce. I could not take science because the place where we are, we used to stay, my mother's place, there was no science, only education up to 11th and 12th. Sure. So then there was no choice. I took commerce. But uh, I think I made peace with commerce. I love commerce also, the way I teach. And I teach human resources and management. So I can manage that. Uh, but that underlying passion for reading and you know writing is still there. So in our college, what I used to do, whenever there are teachers who are absent from arts department, I would tell head of the department up there, they say, can I go and do something? So at that time I realized that there is this English novel called That Long Silence by Shashi Desh Pandey. And Shashi Desh Pandey is a tough writer. You know, her style is different. Mm -hmm. But the entire novel is very griping, but these children were finding it very difficult. So I said, uh, why not, you know, take that? I got chance. Someone asked me, would you want to do a translation for Sahit Academy? Uh, I think it was uh, Pundalik Naik, uh, one of the great writers. He was the uh, convener of that Kokani board. So I said, yes, yes, I will do this. And I read it eight times to actually understand that entire book. And then I translated it. Mm -hmm. And when I was translating it, I would go in the class of arts and read it out to them. And when I was reading out, they were understanding a lot of it. Not only that, when the book got published, uh, Goa University had a symposium diet and where ex-students of whoever had studied that book and present students, there were discussion. And they said that a lot of things which do not come very clearly in English came in uh, Kokni language. Basically must be because regionality, which is there. True, true. Then we may not be able to identify it in English language. Whereas that whole festivities and the whole jingbang of relationships and all that, that comes out in whether it is in Hindi or in, in uh, Kokani or Marathi. So it came out very thoroughly. You have also worked in several Konkani films such as that you have won national as well as international acclaim. How was the experience? Uh, Actually, I have acted in Hindi films also, Hindi and Ooh, Marathi okay. films also, okay. but uh, they are of commercial nature. And initially okay. only I had decided that uh, acting is my passion, but uh, I also, my passion is social. You know, I would like to do something for society. So I had decided that I'm not going to go into any commercial thing. In Goa, we have parallel films with issue, social issues. So like, for example, the movie which I acted, Alisha, that deals with mining. It's okay. a romantic film, but mining issue is there with. Well, third, so man, man, uh, Manis is on mental health. Okay. Zuzia is about uh, landlord and the uh, locals and migrant community. So okay. wherever there are social issues, uh, Amori was water related. So I take uh, issues and uh, I find it very challenging because then you are not what you are. True, true. The yeah. characters are totally yeah. different, no? Sometimes yeah. you are 70 years old or sometimes you're 50 years old. And uh, when I was 55, I think, or yeah, must not 55, about 50 years old, I did a role uh, of a 35 years old with wearing a mini dress and a high heels, which I am not actually. <laughs> I've never worn high heels, but for that movie, I wore it practiced. And so I find it very challenging, but at the same time, I feel it's a self challenge, but I feel that I can give something to the society. Earlier you mentioned you were associated with thumbs up. So how did yeah. it all begin? Again, it began about uh, 25, 26 years back. Uh, this uh, Sangat uh, was started by some of the doctors, Dr. Vikram Patel, he's a well-known uh, psychiatrist, and Dr. Nandita. Um, both, and there were an another two, three people, they started it, and they wanted it as a 
research organization on mental health. Okay. So then after two or three years, they asked many of us, would you like to be part of it? And uh, I was game. So I became part of it and slowly like I started learning about, I, I was doing their translation on autism or about mental health, on depression. Sure. So I simultaneously learned a lot of things about it and I got drawn into it. So now basically it is a supervisory role that I do. Or sometimes when we have to design something, I help them. But they, they have battery of researchers and they're really doing fantastic work. In the meantime, uh, Dr. Nandita has started uh, practical practitioner. So with uh, she has some, started another organization called Setu. Okay. Where they, yeah, they get autistic children, uh, children with dyslexia, then speech problem, and they, she tries to help them. She again has her own, she has created a big organization. So we are lucky that in Goa, we have a lot of these organizations who are sincerely doing a lot of work. You are also spreading awareness about cancer and its treatment. What according to you needs to be done in removing the stigmas associated with cancer? Yeah. So when I, in 2017, I got this, uh, I got detected with cancer. Now, before this, I had handled two or three cases of patients and I knew what was basically about cancer and sure. I was not worried. I was not worried about cancer as such. And I was lucky that uh, I was continuously listening to lectures by Dr. Shekhar Sarkar. He's the director of Manipal Hospital in Goa. So uh, I was that way very calm and quiet. But what hit me very bad, badly was uh, the reaction of people. There were people who were very, very close friends of mine. They just wouldn't, you know, give eye to eye connection. Or if someone, I was coming walking, they would just turn, you know, themselves and go. So that depressed me. And uh, then we have a group called Muskan, okay. where all the cancer survivors and their family, it's become a, it's an NGO. Sure. So I, when I went there, I said that I found it very funny that, uh, and people were calling up, some people were calling up and crying, you know, Ah, uh, now what is going to happen? So nothing is going to happen. I said, mine is a very initial stage. And I was very, very enthusiastic. They said, no. And so when people talk like this, someone actually asked me, you know what? Now people are going to, you know, sympathize with you. They're going to pity you. How are you going to bear that? I will not be able to bear. I said, oh God, that thought had not stuck me. So then Mustan group, all the ladies, they explained to me one thing. They said, listen, Society is not ready for this. For them, cancer is equal to death. So this person now is walking and walk, coming towards me may die tomorrow. So how am I going to face this? This is the question. So then I said, okay, fine. And that is the time when I decided that I am going to, you know, do work or, you know, go out of my way and create awareness about cancer. In the meantime, when I was doing this, some of my friends send me a link of navyanetwork.com. Okay. Navyanetwork.com is a uh, second opinion helpline. It's an okay. online helpline associated with uh, Tata Hospital. Okay. Bombay Tata Hospital. Yes. And uh, they call, when I registered myself, what they do is you have to upload your reports. In two days, they tell you what are the diagnoses. And they tell you what medication you can take. Then after about another two days, that is fifth day, they send another expert opinion. Okay. Sometimes it correlates, sometimes it doesn't correlate. So mine did not correlate. Then I had to go for again, again, uh, investigation and all. But then throughout, they had given me someone called as a patient advocate. Okay. And he was hand-holding me throughout. Anytime I was having difficulty, like difficulty, like people were saying something or I was feeling down, I would, you know, uh, send him a message and then he would reply back. Then I would say that I don't want to go through 
because people told me the minute you do chemo there is lots and lots of misunderstanding the minute you do chemo your kidney will go your heart will go your liver will go everything will be affected so i told this uh, this uh, person i said i'm sorry i don't want to go through chemo he said listen you are 54 now you are young you are physically fit you go through chemo you are not going to have problem but suppose you don't do it now and if it recurs in another 5 years you just see how old you will be you may not when you may have to depend on someone else that made me you know it did convinced me i said no i will go ahead and i went through that chemo i went through that radiation whatever but the drama which people do know is too much in fact i do one i i do stand up comedy of how people were reacting and what was the impact on us so basically all i feel that there is lot of lack of awareness about cancer i agree that 25 years back cancer was a thing which we had to dread today we ourselves have to be very much aware of our bodies one thing and immediately if there is something we have to rush to doctor and there are medicines there are doctors and definitely at least in goa we are really lucky in our goa medical college we have good system we have manipal we have different hospitals which give you this and uh, we have schemes also where financial help is given it is not enough but it is there so i feel that a uh, lot of awareness has to be created among people so with navya whenever i get navya platform or wherever otherwise what i do is whenever i have lectures i go i give my lectures and then i tell very very uh, this thing that you know i was cancer patient do you feel that i have no energy do you feel that you know i i have not uh, this is boy you were cancer patient i said yes i was cancer patient nothing happens because everywhere everybody keeps writing you now the minute someone gets cancer with chemo with radiation your life is gone no i feel it has reshaped me it is a rebirth definitely it is a rebirth because i did go through lot of pain i did you know a lot of times i felt down and i said i, I <laughs> all the drama i did which my husband had to bear but i realized that okay now i have come out so i have to do much more so i joined college i joined um, after 8 months and uh, in january we had some theater competition so i directed a play i was tired no, okay. i didn't tell anybody i used to feel very tired i say oh no but i said no i have to prove it not to others to me that i can do it i acted in three films after that okay and all these friends of mine who offered me roles and said come they trusted me this amori which got national award when i was going through chemo he could came uh, dinesh bosle and he said you are acting in my film i said what are you saying look at my hair it's gone He said nothing doing. I know that you will be able to, and I went and I did it. I did feel tired, it's, and I don't want to be. I'm not a superwoman. I did feel tired. I did feel, you know, fagged out. But everybody was supporting. The best thing is, uh, I went and joined college, and that thing was there in my mind that everybody is going to pity, you know. So I went and told my principal. I said, I said, see, you have to give me my supervision and all that, huh? And uh, you. can't treat me with specialities of course not supervision so many are there no we cannot afford not to give you an a very drama like so i was very happy person who was in charge i said are you giving me supervision he said yes i'm giving you supervision and then they gave me supervision out of six they gave me two and in the classes there were about four or five students the repeaters okay but okay. i felt i felt i was of use i felt so thankful to them that they understood my need and they did not neglect me so over protection is also not good and total neglect is also not good something this i feel that you know organizations have to learn sure or nobody i would uh, uh, after i think uh, first or second chemo my hair started falling off and it was uh, we have this vada punam i don't know what is it called in english 
there is you the women go around uh, banyan tree and i don't do all this traditional okay. things okay but, uh, women have to do something for their husbands for their health so i called up my husband and i said i'm going to beauty parlor and i'm going to do my vada punav he said what vada punav you are doing i went and shaved my hair <laughs> in our in our culture a uh, woman who has a husband is not supposed to shave their but i said no yeah. i'm going to do it many women have done it before me i am not the first one and dr shekhar had told me do what you want and then i tried covering it for some days and putting big and then i forget it ye mera nahi hai mere bas ka nahi hai i just removed and i would go ball i'll show you i'll give you some photos if you want i was bindas and i realized that when i was walking on the road people would say good they knew that i was not well but they said we are with you the best part was i would go to, you know three days after chemo doctor had said you have to take rest so what we would do as soon as chemo is over at home my husband and me would watch a movie or go out and watch a movie okay. or to celebrate this was after third day huh? not three days you are supposed to be or you would say that they would go we would go sit order food my food i would take from home and they're not supposed to take from outside immune system is down but we would enjoy then i would go and do my marketing so in the market whenever these vegetable sellers were there they would you know they would say hey, what happened and i would say no this is what happened don't worry by see that lady who is there no she has suffered and she has survived that lady who is sending no she had both of, you know and the way they would you know and they were very positive and the way they then they call you bye come how are you you feel as if that was my family during that time so that myth which is there you know that uh, people don't understand and they will pity you is not there and i feel more person is economically lower background they are more understanding sure they are more you know more lovable and i got that love <laughs> so okay. i want to give it up by creating awareness i want to ask you you have been playing multiple roles in your life in terms of teaching you write for the radio for theater and for book also how do you manage how do you achieve uh, your work life uh, balance uh, i have to give lot of this credit to my husband my husband uh, is a journalist and uh, 24 by 7 would be out on the field sure so first thing what when we got married yeah. first thing he said was i was like we got married meaning we didn't do any of this uh, wedding rituals and vaidik which you don't know religious both of us were against it we went and did our registration two of our friends were there who were our witness 5 rupaye ka un dono ko hum logo ne chai diya and then that was our marriage and our we told our family you have to accept it they grumblingly accepted it so that was our marriage and uh, when we did our registration my husband told me that don't change your name or surname i was very reluctant because i had decided at that time that i'm not going to wear mangal sutra and you know that period when you are there you are all feminist so i said how how am i going to face all this so he said you have to learn to face this and don't change your surname so i never changed my surname then again when he discussed he said see you are a writer you and that time i had not explored any of my acting talent or anything i used to write poetry now i don't write poetry but he said you are a writer uh, we used to act in a street play we were part of a, a group a uh, students movement where we used okay. to do theater street play etc so he said don't give up all this okay uh, we used we were having organization women's organization he said if you like you you explore what you want but to do all this you cannot pay attention to house also so you, what you will have to do is we will have to get a house help so we decided from day one that we will have a house help so from the time we have been married till date we have a live in maid okay up till now we have about three the third one is right now is there 
So the first one was there till 11 years after she got married, she went. The other one was there for 17 years. She got married and she went and now. So they helped me a lot. And I don't interfere. So that is, it is like uh, very, it's a large family type in our small family. And they know what are my requirements. So that is one thing. But I never compromised with, with children. When children came, I kept all my activities, most of my activities aside. Or sometimes I would take my kids and go. Like when my son was one year old and all, whatever activities I used to do with my students, I would take him. Or if there was an NSS camp, I would take him. And uh, I believe that more you throw your children to openness, they become tougher. And they are. Okay. What are your future plans for your work? Uh, future another four years, I think I will be, I'll be retiring in four years. Okay. I have not really actually thought of anything, but right now I want to go into research. Lot of research areas which are there. So I want to go into research, but the area I have not, because I have area of interest in many. So I'll see, maybe it is women related issues or children related issues. And uh, writing, basically theater, not theater, acting, writing. Okay. And relax. I think I have earned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my last question to you. Uh, what would yeah. you like to tell students how they should deal with this uh, difficult time? You know, mostly it's like online classes and there's a lot of confusion and distance learning. So what would you like to suggest them? Uh, I don't know whether if I say something because see, my time was different. Their time is different. It's very, very difficult for them. The basic yes. difference between them and us. Our parents were not educated. My parents were not educated. They didn't know whether I was in first standard or second standard or I've done my post-graduation. So I learned everything on my own. I meaning my generation. These children, whether they are rich or poor, their parents are there to support. And most of the time, ideas, everything even their homework everything is spared by parents to the children so they do not struggle so i would suggest one thing learn to struggle i would say parents please let the child go and let the children struggle okay today we have information you can't get class properly you can't hear okay internet issues are there but somewhere you can go and you can download something or you can look Google up. You can study on their own. Baba Sahib Ambedkar did not have electricity in the house. He would go out and sit below street light and study. Today we need to do, our children need to do these things. They need to experiment. I feel basically they need to struggle. They need to experiment and don't have an approach where this is difficult, this will not happen, that will not happen. Wherever there are difficulties, all the doors are closed, there is something or the other which is open. You have to look for those places. Don't blame anybody. Each one of us, I feel whether you have parents or you don't have parents or you're rich or poor, doesn't. you have your hands, legs, eyes, everything in your place, even if you don't have. I know people... Who, who are, you know, uh, virtually challenged. They have done their graduation and post-graduation. You have to learn to challenge yourself. That is what I feel. Maybe I'm giving too much gyan, but this is what I feel. Professor Tarpankar, thank you so much for your time. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>